everybody. It is 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Central, and it's uh, 5 p.m. Mountain and 3 p.m. Four. Four. No, it's it's 3 p.m. Oh, don't don't go I there. I can't get. I was gonna. Anyway, we're Central Time right now, so it's really 6 p.m. our time, but 7 p.m. is our normal time. I'm Mike, and uh, this is Jennifer, and we are the Wendlands, and this is Ask Us Anything. On a Sunday night, uh, last Sunday in October. Can you believe that it is November already? Better start thinking Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's coming up. We are coming to you tonight from Okaloosa Island, Florida. And uh, we would have been doing this outside. Last week we did it outside right on the beach. And uh, the sun set and it got all grainy. And then people were saying, oh, your video's all grainy. Well, it's because it got dark out <laughs> in the middle of it. So we thought we would do this inside tonight and see how it goes. Lots of you joining us. And let's uh, let's uh, do, as we always do, say hi to the early comers, those who were waiting. Uh, Peter is there from Keller, Texas. Hey, Peter, thank you for being with us. Uh, Bergen County, New Jersey is where we find our friend Edward Varga, one of our regulars. Hey, Edward. Christopher Colley is here. And uh, Chris, part of our... Uh, RV Lifestyle team, and Chris, I know, is in suburban Chicago. Joanne Howard, Haiti ho she says, uh, we joined the RV gang with our Unity, LTV Unity um, rear, rear, uh, twin, rear bed. twin beds, and we're so excited to hit the road. I bet you are so excited. You are going to have fun. Do you remember what that's like when you know you're going to get your RV in just a couple of weeks or a few days, and how it's just so hard to wait? It is. It but is. you've probably been waiting quite a while. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Joanne. Send us a picture. We love to see pictures when people get their new RVs. Hi to uh, Charles in uh, Georgia. Not sure where Hushton, Georgia is, uh, Charles. We just uh, came back from Georgia. We were there uh, for a couple days this past week. Drove back yesterday, and wouldn't you know it, we found a story. We started researching the history of some of these names and these communities that we passed. And it was really fun. We really got into it. We did. And uh, we'll have a video on that coming up in a couple of weeks. We got a few more stops we're going to get. But some of the, so we found some, some we'll places. We'll just save the names. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't spoil it. All right. I'm not going to save it. I'll save it. But save we found it. some fun names. But I don't know your town in Hashton, Georgia. So, uh, Charles, welcome and thank you. The Poconos in Pennsylvania is where Steve Vitto is tonight. Road Trip Buddy says, take me wherever you go, please. <laughs> That's our buddy. Road trip buddy, who's usually the first on the list uh, up there. So he's slipping tonight. He's only five or six on the list. Uh, question from Edward Varga concerning solar charging. When you don't get much sun, you rely on the generator. Well, the generator is always a great backup to have because you know that uh, if you uh, run out of sunshine, it's not topping it off. You can always uh, have the generator pull you on, right? Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so that's a great uh, tool. Yeah, you can rely on your generator. Now we, um, I just tested ours again, and it's it, it works out really well for us. But um, we're in the south. We're How about in the south. Lack of the, sun, Michigan. Well, yeah, that's true. And in, in much of the country, you know, you don't have sun all the time. Down here in Florida, where we are this week, and for the next Georgia. few in Georgia, we get a lot of sunshine. Um, we um, parked the uh, RV last night. And, uh, you know, we'd been using it, the inverter had been on, everything was on. Uh, when, it, when, we, uh, when I checked it early this morning, it was about 65, 70%. When I checked it at noon, it was 100% because of the solar charging those lithium batteries. And it's just worked out great for us. We have 400 watts of solar, we have two lithium batteries. And there's this, it's this symbiosis, I guess, this great relationship between the sun tapping off those batteries every day and then we can use them all during the day and the night and then next day it tops them off. So if it weren't sunny, what would be the story? Well, I st would still have a couple of days, but and it does still charge a little bit, but not very much. Uh, you know, if it's gray, if there's snow and all that stuff, uh, so you would want to either plug in or now, use, have, have the generator. Do you have to get the snow off those solar batteries? Before, yeah. Yeah, you gotta yeah, get the snow yeah, the off. snow will cut them down. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, you know, sometimes when we're in Michigan, we end up with two feet of snow on ours. And, that and sounds, I've actually shoveled it off. Yeah, I was going to say that sounds a little tricky to get the snow off. Maybe ice and snow. It, it, it is. You don't want to damage them. You, you, that's really a good point because you don't want to use a heavy broom. Uh, I have a push broom. 
when there's a couple feet of snow, I can gently push much of it off, but I don't push all of it. I don't want to use the broom to scrape the solar and damage that. Uh, what I usually do is drive it. And after I get the bulk of the snow off, I'll drive it and it blows it off pretty, pretty clean. So. I just wondered if the manufacturers of the solar panels gave you some directions on how to remove snow and ice. Carefully. Carefully. <laughs> that's, all right. I, that's all I've ever seen. Now, uh, maybe. People have different ideas of what careful means. Yeah. Hi to Ethan Catella, uh, Eric Miller, and Rhonda. Join us. They're regulars. I remember seeing you guys most weeks. Uh, thank you from Ohio. Uh, Chad, uh, Chef Nick says hi from Peoria. Deb Castle, that's another familiar name. 27 more work days until retirement and then hitting the road at the end of December. Whoa, Deb, congratulations. Pretty exciting. Wow, where are you going? Uh, what's your plans? That, that has got to be so fun. Mm -hmm. That is really fun. And, and Deb, your story is exactly what we're all about. That's what we really want about. We want to be your guide, really, to uh, finding freedom you know, freedom on the road to go and do what you want to do and fun, having fun out there uh, through RV travel. So we can't wait to hear how that all, all works out for you, Deb. Congratulations. How many miles do you have on the RV, on the Leisure Travel Van, our new one? Well, we bought this in March, the end of March, 1st of April. And we are, now well, we've got a, maybe another two weeks, we'll be about 20,000 miles. You're going to say 15. Well, we were 15 a couple of weeks ago. Now we're pushing 20. Uh, I think we're 18 now. We're yeah. good at putting those miles on there. Well, we do. We're driving, you know, a minimum of 1,000 every week, going back and forth to Matthews football games. And, uh, you know, driving and around. And we love having our RV. Oh, my gosh. It's, I'm telling you guys, once you get one, you're never going to want to give it up. What is it that we – and we've noticed this, you know, we – uh, camped in it um, Friday, Thursday night, Friday night. Yeah, we had a uh, regular campground that we really wanted to get into, and we couldn't get in because they had a big Halloween program on Saturday, so we couldn't get in on Friday night, so we had to go someplace new. We found another great campground, Albany Very RV nice. Resort. Really enjoyed that. Can't say enough nice things. Yeah, so we have another, we've spacious, booked that again for next weekend. Spacious, had a fenced-in doggy area that was big. Bo liked it, had a mm -hmm. couple of friends. Uh, but what were we saying about it? We, oh, we, they we, had a couple of exercise machines. Oh, yeah. That made me happy. Uh, but what were we saying about the RV? Uh, we've been saying that a lot. When we get into it at night, it's just so... It's, it's cozy. It's your little your little cave. Maybe it, it goes back to our primitive cave I, I don't instincts. Know. We've got a little just, space. It's just you feel secure and safe. In and the rain relaxing. falls. Oh, we don't have great. to go outside. So anyway, we're dry. you all know what we're talking about, most yeah. of you who have an RV, and those of you who don't, we're waiting to get one. That's one of the reasons I'm sure you, you want to get one. And, you know, you have to get gas. You don't have to use those bathrooms at the different gas stations. Sometimes they're not the cleanest. Yeah, it's, yeah. You'll just um, you'll like it once you get one. Uh, somebody says it's a very low volume on the microphone. Really? Probably I'm too far away. Uh, let me check because I think we're, well, let me, it's pulled up about as high as it'll go. Should I move? There we go. Okay, you know what? I can see it is kind of a low volume. Stand by. I'll make some adjustments here. That's why I really appreciate being live and having you guys being able to uh, to, to come contact back with us. But uh, let me look and see. I'm looking for a setting that i got to find, and it's hard to talk. And look at a setting. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm so he's nudging me now. I'm supposed to just talk, <laughs> <laughs> so that you can read and think without trying to do three things. Why at can't once. I see the setting? I don't I know. Why don't we just get closer to the microphone? That oh. might be the easiest way. Well, it, it probably is, but there is a there is always a better way to do it. And uh, I know, there I'm it like, is. That's what I need. Yeah. Okay. So you know, maybe you'd break down and wear your glasses. There we go. Uh, all right, that should, uh, was that doing it? No, I don't know. No, that's the output volume. I need the input volume. Okay, here we go. There, now that you looks got like me. That's there it. you go. All right, thank you guys. for That should be doing it. That's, uh, that's, that should be helping. Now so. I'm feeling like this is amateur hour. Oh, should we? We won't tell them about our experience. No, we were don't tell them. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I can't. No. <laughs> But I got it. No, you may not. Okay. No, you may not. All right. But anyway, it, that should be better. Your mother didn't raise you if you can't say something nice. Well, I wasn't going to say, say where. No, I was just going to tell no, them our experience because no, no, no. it was this kind is, of funny. This is how marriages last. Is uh, you listen. <laughs> okay. I won't say. 
<laughs> I won't say. Uh, how did you end up buying your Class V RV, finance or cash? That's always a great question. Well, um, I don't have a hundred and something plus thousand dollars in cash. Our so first one we bought used. First one we bought used. So we had cash. We had cash. And then we had and we, then some we had that we were them. testing. We had some that we were given prototypes to test. And that and, spoils you. Um, this one we bought and we financed it. Uh, and, so it's uh, us and the bank. Us and the bank. And it usually makes people laugh very heartily when we say that we got a 20-year mortgage. <laughs> yeah. You can get a 20-year mortgage on an you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we you know... Um, whether we pay it off early, trade it in, I don't know. You know, we can do all of that. But right now, we're we're financing it with the bank. We put a bunch down, and can I'm I not say going to go into our personal financial dealings. But we're like like many of you, we we are financing it. So, right, right, all right. Uh, John uh, checking in from Philadelphia. Uh, David is in near us, our near our Michigan home anyway, in White Lake, Michigan. Karen Larson in Killeen, Texas. Freezy Top Plays, I like it, it says hi. Judy is in Wisconsin, Peter G from Chile, Montana, and uh, let's see, Chef Nick asks us, have you ever cooked Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner in your RV? And the answer is no. Well, we could, I could get one of those little microwave dinners for turkey and I could warm that up. We haven't, <laughs> and I don't think we're going to. Uh, yeah, you could cook a turkey. Mary you Jane could. Curry could tell you how you to could. cook a turkey. We could. Probably Chef Nick could tell you I how bet to cook you a turkey Chef in, Nick a, could in, a, too. in a convection oven. Yeah, a convection, we have a convection oven, oven, microwave. But, you know, family is a big thing for us, and we always try to spend Thanksgiving with uh, some of our kids, all of them if we could, but they're all in different parts of the country, so uh, we spend our time with kids and, and uh, grandkids, and you can't put... Uh, Ten people in an RV for Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner. So, but we could. We, we could, could. You know, we could cook our own and uh, have a few of them in. But uh, we always end up with family on uh, those holidays. I'm curious, how many of you do uh, that are out there on the road full time and they're not with family? How many of you use uh, your RV and cook uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas? I think dinner? it was four years ago. I made my last Thanksgiving dinner, and we had I think 15 people. Yeah. And I decided that. That the kids, me in. It's the kids' <laughs> turn. Time for the kids. Time for the Pass kids. Pass the gauntlet. <laughs> or we can get invited. Oh, or go, or else you can cook because your father was a great chef, they tell me. Huh. Yeah. I think so, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't, uh, I'm not that great. Pam Morris said, hi from smoky San Francisco. Yeah, I just saw a report, <laughs> Pam. On That's Bo squeaking his toy. Oh, He's I, got a new I toy. I that noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's somebody opened a door or something. Uh, Bo, you got your toy? Do you Pam, need attention? I, stay safe there. I saw all of the pictures of the fires in California. It's uh, it's uh, crazy. Uh, how do you get a home base address if you want to travel full time? I have no family. My name is Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi, uh, Jason, you get a mail forwarding service. And if you search here on uh, our YouTube channel for mail forwarding service, I did a review on how that works. Uh, and uh, you see how we got mail while we were on the road for extended periods of time. We've also done a couple of recent podcast episodes on this, so if you go to rvlifestyle.com and search our podcast archive, you'll find one there as well. Um, lots of people uh, set up full-time residency in, a, in an RV-friendly state uh, like uh, North Dakota, uh, Florida, um, some, some do it in Arizona? New Mexico, and some in... Uh, uh, Montana, you can do it all there. So there's lots written, uh, we, and you can just search the internet, RV, full-time address uh, while on the road, and you can get lots, but we have done a couple of reports on it, and uh, it's not hard to do it all. And um, I think probably the most popular places, because they are the most aggressively marketing it, is North Dakota. So you get a, that becomes your address of record, and your mail comes there, and they forward it to you wherever you are. Uh, but second to that, I would think, is Florida. We're actually thinking about becoming full-time residents of Florida. We actually, this place, we're in our condo. We own a condo in Florida, so uh, we're thinking of that. This is our home base for uh, half the year or so. Uh, like we're doing it now, we're traveling around using this as a base as we travel. But if you're just in an RV, you can check the best, whatever the best is for you. Uh, start with looking at, uh, at North Dakota. That's probably the most popular state right now for many people. Uh, Lisa is in Michigan, Steve's in Waterford, Michigan, lots in our home state, Larry McCraw in Gainesville, Georgia, 
Uh, Matthew is in Crooksville, Crooksville. No, no, I have no idea where Crooksville is. John is in Bar Harbor, Maine. Um, and somebody's glad that we're uh, back on live. It's a good time for us to talk about our new schedule. We're going to try and do these, ask us anything. Now that it's dark at 7 o'clock and it's hard for us to show you where we are because it's dark, uh, we're going to try and do these every other week. So the next Ask Us Anything will be in two weeks. And we'll rotate that. So uh, this week and on Thursday we'll have uh, a new video that we'll release, a major video on the YouTube channel. And then that will stand up until the following Sunday when we'll do an Ask Us Anything. So we're going to go two weeks for the videos, two weeks for Ask Us Anything. Uh, I hope I'm explaining that right. But uh, every other week we'll be on Ask Us Anything. And every other week we'll have a, uh, a YouTube uh, regular standalone video. And hopefully that means that every week then we should have something fresh for you. So it should work out pretty good. Um, all right. Let's take a look at... Uh, Somebody said the audio is very low, but the audio should be good now. I need to get a quick uh, quick uh, hit on that, and we'll see how it goes. Um, hi from somebody in Madison, Wisconsin. Renting an RV is very expensive. Why are people charging $300 a day? It makes it hard to try the wild. Well, Rick, why do you think they're charging $300 a day? Because they want to keep away people who might be irresponsible because it really is an expensive investment. And... Uh, but, They're but, not cheap. But but why do you think three hundred dollars a day? Because they can they can get it. That's one of the reasons we started the uh, RV renting school because people are paying three hundred dollars a day to rent even a Class B RV. That's how in demand these units are, and uh, that's why many people ha are, are when they are not using their RVs are renting them out. So uh, it works out pretty good that way. And uh, I'm making sure I. Anyway, should be much better and I'll do a quick check here let's see how our microphone volume well the vol the level does seem very low uh, I don't know that's bizarre uh, I guess I could switch over to this microphone uh, you know what I bet no that doesn't do it either I've got I've got one microphone I'm trying to figure out how to work this because this allowed two microphones to be on I can't do a quick check on this because, uh, can somebody quick me a check? Does this sound okay? I don't want this to sound like the amateur hour, but we now have two mics. So let's see how that works out. And while we work it on out, I see we got a super chart, a super chat. Wow, an expensive one from uh, EC Corzilius. Now that means you get to ask a question and you go to the top of the list for the questions uh, with that super chat. So. So thank you. Uh, if you have a question, let me know. Uh, I appreciate your, your shout out there. Um, let's see. No one is telling me. Somebody says it's still very low. All right. I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to switch over to this and see how that works. Well, I can see that's, that's better. That looks better. All right. So I don't know what you that is now to, using but... our uh, main microphone. So will somebody give me We're a We're not quick... using this piece of equipment. Somebody says too loud. Oh. <laughs> now you are loud. Mike was fine. Okay, can you speak a bit more on financing your RV? Let's see, that's better when you switched. Audio is fine, sounds good to me. I'm going to leave it just like that. And now I got to go way back up to all those questions because I got I to gotta talk about this for a so second because uh, in last week's video, somebody came on and um, was really angry that you know, you guys say it's ask us anything and you don't, you didn't answer my question. And gosh, I felt really terrible about that because we do our best to answer our questions. Um, we're looking at a camera and we're trying to talk and on the right hand side, uh, I see, and I think you guys all probably see them as well, a scrolling list of all the comments and all the questions. I mean, um, right now there are 174 people live watching this and many are asking questions and making comments. And so, we try and answer them. We try to jump around. I try to look at the ones questions that we haven't answered uh, a lot previously. Um, sometimes I miss one, and I'm sorry. We do the best we can. So hang in there. Keep asking. We'll do our best. But um, right off the top, I, I'm human. I can't do all of them, right? Right. You and could. They're kind of far away for me to read. Yeah, uh, and it, it's fun. Uh, and then you can see Chris and Phyllis are there. Uh, they're part of our moderators team and. Uh, they help uh, refer some of you to other places where we have answered those questions, but we will always do our best. 
For example, um, let me, I gotta go back to where we left off. Uh, lots of you saying hi, and I'm gonna leave the hellos away from now so I can just kind of get to the questions and nobody will be mad. And then when a whole bunch of people are asking questions, it really starts going. Oh, it's I scrolling mean, and I'm trying to see. I thought I saw a question up there. I mean, there. you've had speed reading and you can read fast, but you're talking too. Yeah, so, <laughs> so and I'm just trying to tell you that we're not intentionally ignoring anybody. Honest, we do our best to get them all, but it's hard. Uh, Linda Reeves, favorite camping spot on the East Coast. Oh man, um, I guess Acadia National Park in Maine. We ought to ask others to post their favorite places. Well, they could. Um, and then uh, we just did, we did a really great tour in the Adirondacks in upstate New York. Loved those. And I guess uh, Whiteface Mountain, uh, that was one of our favorite places near Lake Placid. Uh, we really enjoyed it. We actually stayed at a KOA at Whiteface Mountain and, and Lake Placid. It's one it of the nicest nice. KOA campgrounds. It's all gorgeous. Uh, so those would be probably the two that, that come to, to mind. Sharon Childress, uh, we are on the last part of our eight-week cross-country trip, which included our Utah seven-day adventure guide. Uh, thank you, Sharon. That's uh, one of our books. We're doing a series of seven-day adventure guides. We have five of them out there now. And if you uh, are ever wondering about our books, there's the address. Glad you used that. And uh, Sharon is now in Sumter, South Carolina. Sorry, I'm trying to pull up my chair and now I'm farther away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, she's visiting relatives. Thank you, Sharon. I hope you, uh, uh, let me get that book thing off. I think, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, that trip. I know Utah, it's an awesome state, awesome state. Uh, Hockton is about 45 miles north of Atlanta, right on I-85. Great, uh, that's great country up Beautiful there. Beautiful up yeah, there. Yeah, we love northern Georgia. That's awesome. Uh, all right, uh, I'm gonna go skip on. I appreciate all the highs. I see lots of you saying highs, but I'm gonna try and catch the questions real good. Uh, is there a real benefit in having an extra alternator to top off the batteries? That's a really good question. Many RV companies, um, I wouldn't say many, some of them add that and uh, it becomes a pretty good deal. Road Trek used to do that, and I don't know whether they will once they get back in business again, but uh, that was a big help, having their own special alternator. Uh, but if you have a, a strong, a good enough alternator, and most uh, RVs do, uh, they're pretty efficient in topping off those batteries, particularly if you're using newer batteries, like lithium batteries. They charge faster and more efficiently. Uh, so we haven't felt we need one, but uh, it, it is something that uh, a lot of people think is, uh, is a good deal. And uh, I would uh, check around, ask other people, uh, and see what you think. But from our, our standpoint now, after having one that had that, and having one now that doesn't, um, I'm more than happy with what we have, uh, the way it's working now, it's just our regular uh, alternator charging it. Um, Deb Castle says she's headed to Florida, Louisiana, and Texas, then home for a couple months, then work camping on Cape Cod. Uh, their favorite campground is the East Ham Atlantic Oaks campground. I don't know, I think most of you know what a work camper is. Do you want to explain what a work camper does? Um, you know, they're, they're campground hosts often. Uh, sometimes they just in exchange for a place, they'll do a little bit of light maintenance and help around the campground, and a lot of people do that all year round, have a ball doing it. Uh, cattle dog cruising. <laughs> do you carry a spare tire with you? No, I don't. Uh, I do have a couple of, uh, uh, I have uh, the, the service that came, the road service that came when I bought our RV. I also have Good Sam Road Service. It's probably both the same company, but I have one, both of them. And um, if I have a flat tire, I'll call road service. I thought you were going to say you got a couple flares, a couple orange cones. Oh, I got that new kit, but I got to do a review on that mm -hmm. new LED flare kit. But uh, but no, I don't carry a spare. We did have one before. And, yeah, we uh, had one on our other vehicles, yeah. and it was in a really hard spot to get to. It was I mean, you almost had to tip the van over to get to it. <laughs> just I mean, about. It, it wasn't easy access. We just talked to uh, we had some friends visit us from Texas this week, and they had they were telling us they had to get their spare out and it was more work getting the spare out than it was changing the tire. Um, and with dually tires, you know, a tire on the inside and the outside, and if you break down the freeway, uh, you know, I don't want to change it myself. I'll, uh, I'll call for, for help for road mm -hmm. trip, you know, from uh, road service and that'll help. Um, Karen Mobley says, um, we are from Western PA. We finally took your advice and bought our first RV. Instead of waiting until retirement, we are so happy with this decision. 
we bought a 2017 Zion SRT, a road track. You probably got a great deal on that, I bet, too, a 2017 model. Well, congratulations. That is that is our advice. I mean, if you can do it, don't wait. You don't know what tomorrow will hold. What you do know is that these RVs hold their value. They hold their value really well. And if you have to sell it down the road, you can sell it. But meantime, you've been able to live that dream that you've been working so hard for. Uh, I, I don't know how to tell people that enough because uh, so many people say, oh, I'm waiting until I retire, I'm waiting until this, I'm waiting until that. And I think to myself, you don't know. You do not know. If you can do it, do it now and uh, enjoy that, uh, that time that you had. Uh, you did, we, we don't guarantee tomorrow. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, see, now there's some great lighting, especially since you're inside. Yeah. Do you guys boondock at all? That's our favorite way of camping uh, is boondocking. Probably most of it is boondocking. Uh, we have, uh, like I said, we have solar. We've got lithium batteries. Uh, we're able to boondock uh, as much as we want. Whenever we do our longer trips, uh, almost always we, we boondock. Uh, probably the one time that when we when we are in a campground, more often than not, it's when it's too warm outside. And for we Bo, need our to dog. run the AC. And we need to run the AC for prolonged periods of time. Then we will look for a place that uh, that has a um, 30 amp service, so I can run the air conditioner. And if we have to leave Bo in there, and but most of the time we try and camp where it's not that warm. Uh, and uh, boondocking is our favorite place. And then the next question that always comes up is how can we monitor the temperature for bow and how long yeah, the generator uh, can run? And, and we've shared a lot of this before, but uh, the uh, the generator can last a long time. We just were at a football game in Georgia and had to run the generator while we were watching our grandson play football. Bo was out in the uh, RV and the generator ran from 6.30 at night till about 10.30 at night, I think, and it, that's fine. It didn't take much. I have a propane uh, LP generator. Some people have um, a diesel generator, but I like. I have no problem with propane, uh, and it barely, barely touched my propane. I can't believe it was two weeks ago, Friday, that we were at a football game and they said we could bring Bo into the game. <laughs> yeah. No way. Uh, like when I want to watch the game. I don't want to tend to bow. Yeah. And yeah. it's also raining. Uh, Elk hounds don't like rain. Where do you park your RV free overnight when you're in Canada? Uh, great question. Uh, we're not in Canada to stay free very often, but I would look up Boondockers Welcome. In fact, uh, we'll have an interview with Boondockers Welcome's uh, president uh, on the uh, Wednesday podcast and they'll talk about how their service works. Uh, Boondockers Welcome is a network of people who make their property available for you to stay free overnight. And uh, to, they're gonna raise the price uh, come the middle of first or second week of November. So be sure and listen to our podcast on, on Wednesday. I would join them. You can always find free places to stay there. Do you need to explain? Welcome. Boondockers welcome. That sounds like it's free, and then you say they're going to raise the price. Well, it's yeah, it's a website. It's a service that you join, and it costs uh, thirty bucks right now, and I think it's going to go up to fifty bucks. Uh, but that gives you then access to make these reservations. You can actually go to their site, and you can look and see uh, where people where to stay, and then you can. But you have to be a member to be able to actually contact those people. So that's one site. The other thing is Harvest Hosts. They have members, uh, uh, wineries and farms and things like that in Canada that you can stay free overnight there. Uh, you can, you have to, that's a membership site. You have to join that site. Links to all of that are on our RV Lifestyle blog and you can find it. But lots of places to stay uh, for free overnight in Canada. Um, okay, I'm wandering through again. Lots of you saying hi and we love to see those hellos. We're kind of looking at them real quick and we're trying to uh, to uh, uh, gather uh, gather some of the questions. Here's one. When you go up to the upper pen in the snow, what do you, oh, upper peninsula, upper peninsula, I bet you believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you use, uh, what do you do to use your LTV in the cold? Well, it's true of any RV. Now we will have we will go back to Michigan around Thanksgiving time, and at that point, I'll winterize our LV, our LTV, our RV, and that means I just basically put antifreeze in the plumbing system, and we no longer use the water, and we no longer use the uh, the flush on the on the toilet. 
It's a sad day. It is a sad day. <laughs> but that's all we have to worry about. So when we camp, uh, to use the toilet, you just flush with antifreeze. You get a jug of antifreeze and you keep it in the in the bathroom and whatever you put in, put that much antifreeze in and you'll have no problems. And of course we turn the heater on, we run the heater. Um, the camp out that we'll do in the Upper Peninsula at Taquamanon Falls that we've been talking about in January. Uh, and by the way, we have over 50 people coming to that already. Uh, when we do that, uh, we they, they have electric hookups, so we also will run our heater and we bring one of those little ceramic heaters as well, a portable heater. Sometimes we have to use it if it's real cold. Most of the time we don't. We put um, Reflectex on the windows, which keeps the heat in. And you can buy a roll of, again, I, there's videos on all of this that we've done here in the YouTube channel. So you can check all that out and, and see it. Uh, so uh, let's see. Here's somebody that had Christmas dinner in their uh, road trek RV, a class B RV, uh, but it was just burgers. <laughs> burgers are easy. And then my sons and I went back out skiing. It was just fine. We were together. That's right. It's the togetherness that is the. But we had a chef ask that question. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that into cooking, but anybody who's a chef, they yeah. are. Where do you dump your tanks when you're dry tank camping? Well, we don't dump them where we're camped, that's for sure. Uh, they don't usually fill up for three or four days, five days even, you know. And uh, we always find a dump. There's always uh, a dump somewhere nearby, most truck stops, many uh, loves service centers, uh, pilot service centers. We use the All Stays app. They have one on helps you locate RV dumps throughout the um, uh, throughout North America. Most RV dealers also have dump facilities available for their customers. They may charge you a few dollars to use it. Many small communities have municipal campgrounds with free dumps, so we've never had a problem uh, finding a place. Uh, many uh, rest areas along the interstates have RV dumps, so we've never had a problem trying to find one in. Uh, you can usually go four or five days easily without having to uh, having to dump. Uh, looking quickly here, uh, Coach House RV in Florida has their Platinum Three model on the transit chassis. Oh, I missed that question. Where did I see that question? Somebody asked. Um, I'm looking for it. I saw it real quick and I was going to get it, but I can't find it here. Somebody asked what RVs are on the Ford Transit system, and there are a number of them now. It's very popular. Pleasure Way just came out with a Class B on the Transit system, two different models that they have. Um, Leisure Travel Vans has the Wonder, which is, uh, we tested that. There's a great video on this channel of our test of the Wonder. Uh, we ran it through a blizzard. We ran it down uh, to Florida. We took it out to Utah. That's up here. You can read that on the channel, a full review on that. Um, what other ones have the one? The Coach House Beyond is on the Wonder Transit chassis. Uh, the um, Ford. Or the Ford, I'm sorry, the Ford Transit chassis. Uh, Thor Motorhomes just introduced the Sequence, and then they have another model, I forget the name of it, that is on the Ford Transit. I think the the sequence, Ford Transit chassis is wonderful, and what, $25,000 cheaper? Than the Sprinter, yeah. Uh, the Ford Sequence is on the Ram, Dodge Ram chassis, but they also introduced a, a Ford Transit chassis version of one of their Class Bs as well. So more and more RV makers are switching to the Ford Transit uh, chassis. Why? Well, uh, it's easy. they're easier to get the chassis, they're much less money. Um, Ford is making a concerted effort to uh, make these chassis a little more beefed up and, and uh, many of them were diesel, they're now coming out with a gas model uh, transit for RVs. So Ford is trying very Ford hard, is trying very they're hard. really trying hard to get into this. And RV makers have been able to get their hands on them, you know, they can't get the the Sprinter chassis uh, from Mercedes-Benz has been all bought out by Amazon for their delivery vehicle. So uh, we have a video Thursday, I believe you'll see, and it's on the one company that has plenty of Sprinter chassis, including 2019. So you can watch that video. And the reason they got them is because they paid big bucks to get those chassis. So you pay a little bit more, but there's there's only one company out there I know now that has uh, pretty much whatever you want on the Sprinter chassis, and uh, we'll we'll do a story on that. We did a tour of their factory not long ago. So we'll make a video, and then they'll be yeah. Then they'll going. be all sold out. <laughs> so, uh, uh, which of you wanted to go full time RVing first? Well, 
I guess we are full time in the sense that this be, has become our, our business, our job now. And we're always working every day, seven days a week. But um, we're in our condo now and we'll stay here until almost Thanksgiving. Well, we'll stay here till Thursday and then we'll take off in the RV for a couple of days. Then we'll come back. We use it as a base. We're researching one of two seven day adventure guides that we'll be releasing um, right after the holidays on Florida. And we'll be doing the west coast of Florida in a week or two, and we'll be in the RV. But we're not full-timers. We stay in our condo for a few days as a base, and I'll use this time to edit, to do a lot of video editing, catch up. And then we'll go home. We'll stay in our Michigan home for a couple of weeks, and then we're off on the road. We use the RV every week. But, um, you know, between the RV, our Michigan home, and our uh, Florida condo, uh, that's probably where we are uh, all the time. And then sometimes we we have to fly out to an RV show and people will, you know, we, we fly out there and we'll stay in a hotel. But almost always it's one of those three places and we're probably half to three quarters time if you want to count the actual time we spend living in the RV. I think so, right? Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'm trying to go through some of the questions here and uh, pull off some of the uh, the questions. Sharon says, I will miss you every Sunday. The live show, look forward to it each week. Well, thank you. I look forward to it, too. Maybe you, know, you should do half an hour instead of an hour. I'm open to any suggestions. I want to. We want to serve you guys. We, we think our role here is to be your guide to how to go out there and, and have freedom and fun through RV travel. And uh, we love doing this. It's really fun to go back and forth like this. If, if enough of you ask for it every week, we'll we'll find a way to do Cause, it. Because we are both pleasers, right? We like we to make pleasers. people happy. We are. Now, uh, like we're going to have to leave here in about 15 minutes because you know what needs help then. Bo. Because we have to take Bo to the dog park today. He goes in the morning and off in the night. So, And Bo I had suggested that we do this from the dog park and then we realized that Bo would be too excited. He would not understand being at the we're dog park. We were going to take the RV to the dog park and do it there, but he, standing there and doing this thing, he would go, he'd be driving us nuts, yeah. barking. So, he'd be, so, so, he uh, wouldn't understand Sharon, that. Sharon, thank you. We'll, we'll, we certainly will consider it. If enough of you really want it, we will try and find a way to do it. Uh, and that will be... But if you do it every week, you have to cut it short. Yeah. Uh, Pat wants us to speak a bit more on financing your RV. Is your rate comparable to a car or a house? Thanks. Uh, that mic is much better. Okay, good. Well, it depends on what the interest rate is. Yeah, in our case, and it changes all the time. It's it's uh, it's a little cheaper than a car, I think. We're going to do a whole lot of stuff about RV financing because so many people are so interested in it that we'll have a podcast episode on it. And here's something else, uh, Patricia, that we are knowing is that a lot of people who have bought uh, RVs and are paying higher interest rates because rates have dropped. You could, just like a house mortgage, you can refinance your RV purchase. So we're going to talk about that. We've got an expert coming on that. Um, but we shopped around, and I honestly don't remember the exact rate we're paying, but it was a it was a competitive rate, and uh, mine is with the Bank of America. So for whatever that's worth, uh, and and it was recommended by the dealer that we bought through, and uh, I've had no problems with it. And uh, you know, it's I don't see the money. It's just goes out of my checking account so so there you go it uh, it, it gets pretty um, let's see uh, okay people are telling us that the microphone is better and uh, I can't figure some say oh it's not any good now it's much better so uh, it's hopefully you're all are hearing us okay I can't <laughs> it's so funny because I'm looking at the comments one says Oh, that's great. Other one says, not so good. Other one says, too loud. Other one says, not loud enough. So uh, hopefully you are all hearing and, uh, and it will work out pretty good. Uh, Paulette says, we just returned from an amazing two-month trip out west and your guide to the five national parks was very helpful. Thank you. That was our Utah guide again. Uh, that's the second one tonight that talked about that. And um, can I do a little plug on our books? Uh, we've got all these books. Let me just throw that up there. We've done uh, five of our Seven Day Adventure Guides. This was our big project this year. We have one on Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We have one on Utah, uh, five different, uh, seven different stops in Utah, seven different stops in the UP of Michigan. We did one on Yellowstone National Park, just about Yellowstone. And for those of you who've never been there, it will save you a lot of time. 
we did one on Colorado and it was a big circle tour of Colorado that was just um, a great trip that we did and lots of nice places to see there. And we just um, uh, did one on the Adirondacks, uh, our trip to the Adirondacks. We were out there in June and we put together our seven day adventure guide on that. And we will soon have after our next two will be one on the Gulf Coast of Florida and one on the Atlantic Coast of Florida. So we'll cover all of Florida in a couple and two of those. You've got some good questions there. But there's um, there's the link to our books that you can find. Okay. About um, want to know about booking ahead of you know and reserving spots. Okay. Well, let's. Okay. Let me start this one. Mike says, "Does it matter?" where or what state to buy or order my new pleasure way my closest dealer is three hours away trying to get the best service and deal minnesota mike mike that's a good question um whenever you can i always recommend that you buy from the dealer that you will have servicing your unit that said um pleasure way leisure travel van they don't need a lot of service now you do need service to the engine but we've had ours for six months now and have not needed really any service. I'm going to take it there just before Thanksgiving to have them winterize it. Actually, I want to do a full video on their winterizing process. Um, but uh, I know it would be great if, if I needed service uh, to have a relationship with the dealer the, or a service center. So that's, that's the first thing I'd say. If you can possibly get a good deal, if the dealer has a good reputation, try and buy from a local dealer. But on the other hand, if the price is much, much better, uh, understanding that everything that you buy in that rig, and you know, this goes with all RVs, not just the pleasure way, uh, everything, all the major parts, you know, the, the furnace, the heater, the, uh, the batteries, the, all that stuff is covered under, you know, the microwave, the TV, uh, the things that, that are more apt to break, those are all covered by their own individual warranties. And most dealers will certainly honor those. Um, so it's not the it's not a life or death thing if you buy from somebody out of state because they gave you a much much better price but naturally all things equal it's better to buy local because then you have a relationship you get to know your service guy like I the dealer that does mine up in in Holland Michigan I can call up and say hey Scott it's Mike and he knows oh yeah how you doing and uh, this is what I want to have you done you did this the last time great um, you don't have that when you buy and you have it serviced out of state so uh, for whatever it's worth. Okay, which one did you think was a good question? Uh, uh, wh where did you think? I can't see that far uh, away. All right, Jennifer. Jennifer tends to find these. I've got a. I have. I have a set of order. I kind of go down and then I'll. I'll get down there and. Oh, there's one back there. I, I can't. I can't find that. It's really hard to pull the questions out. I know some people have a moderator, like you'd be watching on another community and you'd answer yeah, ask me the question. Yeah, because I can't read way over there. Uh, <laughs> so uh, here's, I think this is the question. I want to know how far in advance when traveling yes. in your RV do you need to make reservations at a campground? It depends on if it's a holiday weekend, you know, if uh, you think it's going to be filled. Uh, Halloween. It, yeah. every, yeah, most campgrounds have been all uh, filled all, all month long. It's become a huge holiday. You can't get a reservation. Yeah, we got we turned trouble. away. We got turned away. We got turned away at the gate. Yeah. Filled uh, at the Kentucky Horse Park. So, so yes, uh, if you're going to stay at an organized campground, you probably need reservations in advance. And that's there just aren't enough camping sites uh, at most of the campgrounds. So uh, in popular areas, you're going to have to do that. That's one of the reasons we like to boondock. That's why we like Harvest Host. That's why we like Boondockers Welcome. Why we like overnight RV parking. These are all different services. You can find links to them all on the RVLifestyle.com travel blog. But that means we don't ever have to worry about finding a place to stay. And that's why we like Cracker Barrel. And then we have breakfast there the next morning. You can do carry out. Yeah. Uh, when we're on the way going someplace, we. We very seldom will we stay at a at a uh, place that charges us money for an overnight stay because we, we're leaving first thing in the morning. We're usually coming in later at night. So uh, if we're going to explore an area, we'll we'll try and boondock or find a campground nearby. But uh, that's good. All right, uh, back to a couple more questions. Um, we want to thank you for the WineGuard tip on changing the SIM card. We're set up on Verizon now. Uh, where's your puppy? Mike sounds a bit under the weather. I, yeah, I feel great. 
<laughs> He's but had a great day today. I have had a great day. We've I got had, out we in both this, have had a good day. I was out in this. We had a gorgeous day here in Florida, and I actually spent about two and a half hours on the beach, mm -hmm. reading and uh, hanging out. Uh, Bo is where are you? Bo? I think he gave up on us. He was squeaking his toy. Yeah, he's, he's. We're taking the dog park in a minute. Yeah, so he's as gone. soon as we're done, he goes to the dog park. Uh, Eileen is talking about the WineGuard Connect Two, and if you look at the videos on the website, you'll see on my roof now I have two of these dome-shaped uh, WineGuard systems. One is the WineGuard Connect Two that came with our our vehicle, and that was was set up on the AT and T system. I actually went up and swapped out the SIM card and put my Verizon, a Verizon uh, connection on there. The second one looks just like it, except it's white in color and its name is the Togo system. That I learned about later and that only works on AT&T, but the reason I got that is because it's a flat fee for RVers of $360 a year, the Togo system, and uh, it's uh, pretty much unlimited access. They might put you in a priority if you reach over you know, 25 gigs or something of, of use, but it's a really great system. So, and I thought, well, this is good because if I'm in an area where the Verizon system doesn't work well, I can switch to the AT&T. And we've did just that at, uh, in one of our trips a couple of weeks ago. We couldn't get a Verizon signal. I went to AT&T and it was great. So I have both of those. And uh, I also have a cell phone booster that will work uh, with uh, with our cell phones and tablets and other stuff. But uh, anyway, all that stuff is up. If you just do some searching under recent videos and you'll see uh, how I set that up. But I'm glad you did that too. Um, it was very simple to take the wine guard system and just swap that SIM card. You just had to crawl up on the roof. And, uh, and that was really easy to do. So thank you, Eileen, for uh, letting us know that question. Uh, any precautions I need to take when in zero degree weather with my new Battleborn 100 amp lithium batteries in the Class B? Well, according to the Battleborn folks, no. Uh, that they're set to actually shut down and not discharge or charge when it is that cold. So the batteries are sort of self-protecting when it's like that. And uh, of course, when you drive and you and uh, you get moving around, depending on where your batteries are, they'll, they'll often warm up and then they'll take the charge. But when it's that cold, they'll shut down. And uh, you can call the folks at Battleborn and you can find out uh, more about that. But um, uh, that's one of the nice things. They're pretty much maintenance free, Peter. You don't have to really worry. Um, does AAA tow RVs? I don't know. I don't think so. You got to be careful on a lot of RVs. A lot of them you need a flatbed trailer to pull them. Uh, because they're so long, so uh, I would I would always go with uh, you know Good Sam or whatever the towing. If you bought a new one, you you got road service from the manufacturer with their service. Uh, I would check with uh, with a, if you belong to a club, um, you know RV Escapees or the FMCA. Uh, check their service plans out. But uh, I don't know about just calling AAA yourself. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a couple of you are asking some some comments and some questions, and uh, um, let me just kind of work through there. Lots of you saying nice things. You know, we helped us. Uh, you help, your videos have helped us. We skirted the trailer reflective material in the windows. Mary Ann uh, said up, up above that uh, she's in Pennsylvania and they have to live in their 34 foot travel trailer for the winter, so they're trying to get it ready. And uh, those are some of the things that she did, and she thanks us for the videos. Thank you so much. We've got hundreds of videos. If you've not seen them yet, can I make this my appeal to you to first give us a thumbs up? Everybody hit the thumbs up. Uh, but um, I'm really, I want to be 100,000 subscribers, and we're something like 92,000, and it's just been going really slow uh, after the travel season ended. So if you haven't subscribed, it would be um, a real uh, gift to Jennifer and me that you would just subscribe to our videos. And you can do that uh, right here uh, through uh, the, the links on the YouTube channel. And we'd really appreciate it. But uh, um, thank you so much. Uh, we've got hundreds of them out there and they cover all sorts of different topics. Uh, all right. Um, oh, is now coming for pets. If you never use your outdoor shower, do you still have to run it to winterize with the antifreeze? Yes, you do. 
good question. Very really good. good question because a lot of people say, oh, I, don't, I didn't use it. Well, there's still going to be probably some water in that line. Uh, it just happens, you know, when you when you're running through the plumbing. So, uh, when you uh, winterize your RV, run a little of the anti threes through the shower as well. Great question, and uh, we've got a couple of winterizing videos up here as well that you can you can see. Um, how much do you use your generator? Well, we've been using it a lot. We used it all the time. We ran the air conditioner Friday night. Because we have a dog. We have been using it a lot. Now, don't you think that our generator runs a little quieter than the other ones we've had? Well, we only had one. Uh, we had one in our very first one, the used one, the 20, 28 Six. model that we bought in 2012. And that seems so loud. I mean, this is loud, but it's not, I don't think it's as loud. And it, Either that it or our hearing is going, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, it's probably our hearing. <laughs> Uh, head west on 90 says Sundays don't feel right without you. Oh, Aww, I like that. That's sweet. You keep talking like that. We'll be on every Sunday. You sweet talking us here now, and uh, we, we appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> that is so kind. And uh, they even repeated it. Look at that. They said it a second time. Uh, Larry, I'm listening to you by earbuds. The sound level is fantastic. Keep on keeping on. Thank you, Larry. Uh, please speak to the comfort comparison of the twin mattresses versus the Murphy bed mattress. We are torn between the Unity twin bed and the FX. The FX is the model we have with the Murphy bed that comes down uh, in the front of the, uh, the area. Jeanette says, please help. So right. Jennifer, you talk about So that. the Murphy bed, I think, has a thicker mattress. The twin beds were not quite as thick, the mattress. I'm not a good Let's person. Like so I'm not a good like person so. to ask because um, I'm the princess, princess and the pea. Yeah, I'm very are. fussy about sleeping. So um, I would say that the king is more comfortable. The mattress. It is. It's thicker, bigger. It's a king size bed. For convenience, it's hard to beat the twin beds that are there all the time. They're all made up. You just. You stop you, if you're driving and you need to sleep. Just go back. They're all there. You just crawl and in. And we only done. had the twin beds for two weeks, and we had our twin uh, sleeping bags, mm -hmm. and we just threw that on top of the mattress, and it was great. And it was very comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would not have had any problem have, keeping that unit too, except we wanted that 2019 chassis, and the 29 chassis that we have comes with the Murphy bed, and um, we have I mean, a lot more room in the unit that we have by not having the two twin beds. The shower seemed to be bigger mm -hmm. with the twin beds, and it had a big shower than the, you know, the toilet and sink the right across. Shower across it had a side. door that shut that made it really nice for Privacy. when one person's working and the other wants to sleep in. Or if one was watching one program and another is doing something else, you really had two rooms. Basil uh, and Tarragon, uh, I think that's your name. If you look look at our review, just do a search. We have a review here on the YouTube channel on uh, The Wonder, a full review on how it worked. I think it's, we show you how Jen's sleeping in and I'm up, I shut the door and I'm making coffee and I'm working in the, in the morning. Um, and then we have a full review on the unity that we have. But um, it, I, I would... We chose the Unity because I wanted the bigger, cha you know, the newer chassis, and I think that I really like the the Murphy bed. It's a little more work. You got to spend thirty seconds pulling it down, and and uh, but. But as far as he gets up first, he's the kitchen. He's right where I'm sleeping. And I do wake you up. And you turn up. on the light, so I am awake. Yep. And you bump my feet. I bump our feet sometimes. <laughs> well, your feet's already hanging over. You always, I always sleep have my way feet down. Hanging and, over the edge. By, by morning time, you're like hanging out the bed. <laughs> So yeah, so that is one of the things to consider. And the on the wonder, I really like that that I could just kind of slip out of bed, and shut the door, shut the door, and she, and it's private back for her. I can make my coffee, turn on my lights, do my work, and it didn't bother you and at all. And you can with the two twin beds, put a leaf down and put the two mattresses together. Yeah, you know, I would like to go. We should talk to our friends at Leisure. I'd like to do another review on the wonder, or actually, I just like to get my hands on it for a couple of weeks <laughs> and try it. Because I really liked it. I think you'll be ha you could be happy with either one, but um, and I'm probably just self validating my own choice, which was for the Murphy bed. Uh, I think I would give that a slight edge in comfort. First of all, it's just a bigger it's a, mattress. It's a thicker mattress. Yep, that's a long question. I hope that that kind of. Uh, but kind you of know, works. the way they make mattresses nowadays, 
you know, our condo, we've got, you know, had to buy beds. You can't flip them over and rotate them the way mattresses used to be. Bingo. We got another super chat. This Ooh. is another, a $20 super chat. Steve, that's, thank you. I always feel guilty with super chats. I used to promote them and tell people, I didn't promote them, but I explained to people what they were, but, because uh, you don't have to to send us money to have us answer your question. And we never did figure out how much of this money we get and how much know. they keep. I don't even know if you I, know, we, I don't know if I really even get it. I don't know if I, I mean, we've never, <laughs> tonight's been a record because we had a $24 one and now we have Steve's 20, but Steve says, uh, time is money. Here's some money. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Love the show. Been a fan since the beginning. Wow. Okay, Steve, we'll let, let you ask this. Uh, should we do it every week or can we do it every other week? Uh, you guys tell me. I got to get a bunch of your answers real quick because we're running out of time here. But and both every week, every other week, you let us know. And, and uh, shall we just say whatever the results of this are, we'll abide by it for a yeah, while? For a while. Okay. Bob, so, you want to go to that dog park? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's great. Uh, I really enjoyed your coverage of RV shows. Do you recommend buying at a show or going to a dealer? I almost pulled the trigger in Hershey. Well, if you buy in Hershey, you are buying from a dealer. Now, that dealer, for example, our friends that came and visited us this week from Texas, Doug and Glenda, bought at the Hershey show a few years ago. Their dealer was Fretz RV in Pennsylvania. They live in Texas. But they're always traveling, and they make a trip once a year, uh, and they, they head that way, and they make a day trip. They pull over, and they do a little bit of odds and ends, and they, they touch base. Uh, you get a better deal when you buy at a, at a show, always, because the dealer has that. That RV is in their stock, and they want to move it out. They don't want to drive it home. When you order, you don't get as good of a deal because that's money that they're not going to see for a year until that unit is made. So always remember that. Uh, you do get a better deal. And uh, thank you for your, your kindness there. I wonder what they almost bought. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. Um, Chris, thank you, Chris. Uh, if you see Chris Colley in the, in the comments on the right, he's uh, linking lots of videos and things that we're talking about. And... Uh, um, I'm kind of going to go quickly in because we're getting right down to the end. Yeah, it's 7 o'clock. Bo's going to... Uh, somebody tells us that AAA again. does now offer RV towing at an extra cost. Yeah, I bet. I bet that is extra. But that's good to know. So thank you. You'd certainly have to tell them that ahead and uh, and go from there. Um, um, let's see. Hey, guys, I don't know why, but I never get the notices. Bummer. I mean, of when the video's on. That's because you gotta. There's a once you subscribe, that's one thing. But then there's another thing. There's like a little bell icon that you can see here when you subscribe, and you gotta click the bell icon. And then whenever we put up a new video or whenever we get live, you'll get uh, an email uh, or a notification. So then you'll always know. Uh, they don't send those out automatically just to subscribers. They make you say, "Hey, I want to get those notifications." And I just, I kind of appreciate that because. Uh, I don't want to ever bother anybody with these, but uh, but you didn't need to check that little bell icon, and then they will give you a notification when we go live or when when we have a new video out. Okay, here's the here's the thing. You're gonna count these, Jen. Ready? Count them. Get your hands ready. Okay, every other week, every week, every week, every week, please, every week. Rhonda says every week. Okay. Wait, okay I'm, I'm not gonna, done yet. No, I want to stop you right now. Bob says. Okay, no, no, no. This is this is just real obvious to me. If somebody says every other week, just listen every other week. Stop it. <laughs> okay. I'm the one who's talking about okay. only doing it Phony. every other week. Yeah, okay. it's for us, not them. I know. Okay, Bob Keith says every other week. Uh, Rose says every week. So that's two. Maybe people are being kind, trying to give you a week off. No. Uh, Ken says every week. Every week. Every week. Oh my gosh. Okay, Chris says he's going to run a poll on the video. <laughs> All right, so we'll have this video. This video goes up live and you know you can watch replays. But right now it it okay, so come back and vote. We'll do a poll that'll keep it cuz Jennifer's not doing well at keeping Good track of this. Uh, okay, we Good appreciate it. We look forward to every week. Uh, okay, Chris says it's set up uh, somehow uh, you have enough to do every other week. That's what Edward See, says. Being kind to you. Well, thank you. Uh, every week I'll watch uh, every week or consider slight longer program if every other week. We already do an hour, so um, okay. Uh, weekly. This has been fun. Uh, every week, every week, every week, every week. All right. So here's the deal. We will be back next week. <laughs> 
And uh, we'll see what the poll results pull, because that'll pull in some people that didn't watch this video tonight. Um, but uh, I'm hearing you. I think we had two every other week or three every other week, and all the rest were we every week. So, um, so we will uh, we will do this. Uh, what was that? I'm telling you, it's eight, seven o'clock. It's Bo needs to take his it's walk. It's Bo's walk time. Oh, you know what it is? It's telling me I have to update the newsletter. the newsletter, and the newsletter comes out tomorrow. Did I tell you all about, you all know about the newsletter that we send out a newsletter every Monday um, with lots of inside information and it's kind of some of the first stuff and we share a little bit about what we're doing and you can subscribe to that through rvlifestyle.com, our travel blog. Uh, all right, this reminded me twice that I, uh, I have to, uh, <laughs> that I have to, to uh, do the newsletter tonight before it goes out in the morning. Thank you guys for watching. I can't believe how fast an hour goes by. 226 people watch this live. Uh, 89 of you did give us thumbs up. Thank you for that. Two of you gave us thumbs down. Well, thank you for that too, I guess. Uh, and thank you guys for helping us figure out. Right now, the decision was in your hands and we will be back next week and uh, we'll follow the results of this poll. If you want us every week, we'll be every week. One quick thing I forgot to say. Hope you're staying with me. The podcast. We're going to try something new this week on the podcast. We're going to make a, a video version of it available. Uh, for some reason, people don't listen to the podcast, but they may watch it on YouTube or they, and why, I don't know. Uh, but we're going, we, people have asked us. So starting this week, we'll have a playlist that has all of the podcasts. We'll have the highlights of our most recent or our more interesting interviews up. So you can listen to those on the podcast. And again, if you're a subscriber, if you've clicked that icon, you'll see when we have new podcast interviews up. So we'll put those up here on the channel as well. See you next week live. And look for our video Thursday on uh, the company that has lots of sprinters, if you're looking to get a new sprinter. Uh, Wednesday, the podcast interview is all about Boondockers Welcome, and uh, I think you'll, you'll find that a really interesting one. Uh, the Hi, newsletter welcome. comes out tomorrow, and uh, new posts on the blog every day, rvlifestyle.com. Bo saying it's his time, Dad. All right, everybody, we have to do our obligatory picture of Bo. Where is Bo? Bo. Right here. Here's Bo. Hey, Bo. Can you see he's Bo down there? To, yep, he's right there. Bo, you want to go to the dog park? Come you on. want to go to the dog park? All right, we are yeah. off to the dog okay. park. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You make us uh, make us feel very loved. And uh, we love you. We really do. You. It's hard to talk about how nice this is. I know. you got to take the dog for a walk. Say okay. goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, Mr. Bo.